how it works is that it would prevent the rate limiting reaction of breakdown of fatty acids, which we call beta oxidation, which will be the next topic we'll come to. How does it do so? It will bind to the enzyme which transports the fatty acids into the mitochondria, which is a rate limiting reaction for beta oxidation. And hence, beta oxidation will not occur when fatty acids is actually occurring. The enzyme is carnitine acyl transferase 1. Malonal coke binds to that enzyme and prevents the fatty acids from entering into the mitochondria for breakdown. Which means when you make the fatty acids, they will actually be stored, not being broken down immediately they have been synthesized. Is that okay? I'm sure you will have met these reactions where one reaction of synthesis and then there's a reaction which is alternative which is leading to a breakdown and these two reactions are working in such a way that one reaction is occurring, the other reaction is inhibited. When the other reaction is occurring, the other reaction is inhibited. You get the sense? So in this case, the process of fatty acid synthesis, when it begins, the process of breakdown stops. Why? Maranal CoA inhibits the process of breakdown. Is that okay? So, at this point, we have encountered the production of Maranal CoA. And we have also said this is the activated donor of acetyl groups for fatty acid synthesis, right? Now, how then does the process of fatty acid synthesis occur in the cytosol? Well, I must tell you that this is done by the enzyme called fatty acid synthase. What this enzyme is, it's actually a dimer. And it has seven catalytic activities. So basically, it is this same enzyme that would catalyze all the seven reactions of fatty acid synthesis. Is that clear? If that doesn't make sense, you could have encountered one enzyme which has different activities before. The enzyme for fructokinase 2 has a site which also does the fructose 2,6 bisphosphatase activity, right? One enzyme doing more than one reaction. In the same way, this one has seven reactions that it does. Is that clear? So how is this main enzyme made? Well, this enzyme has two sites, subunits. It's a dimer, so it has one site, to look something like this, one site which has an SH, a theo group, supplied by the amino acid cysteine, and then it has another site which also has a theo group by cysteine, but this site is referred to as an acyl carrier protein. This is the site where the fatty acid is going to be attaching in the process of synthesis. What the acyl carrier protein is, it is a derivative of a vitamin, vitamin pantothenic acid. Which vitamin is pantothenic acid? Yes? B6? Which one is it? B2 is riboflavin. B12 is cobalamin. Which one is which? Is it B7? Yeah. It's which one? B? B5. Correct. It's actually B5. Pantothenic acid. Is it that there was no other thing but it just gets fine? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there is B1 is thiamine, B2 riboflavine, B3 niacin, right? Yeah, so B5, pantothenic acid. This is the vitamin necessary for fatty acid synthesis. In fact, the ester carrier protein would exist as a derivative in form of 4 phosphor. Pantothenic. It's a derivative of pantothenic acid. And this has theo group, and it's on the theo group of this phosphorus of pantothenic that the fatty acid synthesis is going to be occurring 
So basically, this is what is referred to as the SL carrier protein. Is that clear? So, how is fatty acid synthesis going to occur on the enzyme fatty acid synthesis? Alright? I must tell you that you are going to see a few repeating reactions. Okay? There will be a few repeating reactions for fatty acid synthesis. In fact, the way you are going to be naming the enzymes it is also going to be linked to ACP. I'm emphasizing this because the enzyme you're going to be seeing in fatty acid synthesis will be quite similar to the enzymes you'll see in beta oxidation. Except they will have an ACP and the reactions are going to be working a little bit more opposite. Breakdown of the fatty acid, reduction would lead to synthesis of the fatty acid. And this is why, let me probably put this up there. This is why, when you have the fatty acid that has been produced, this fatty acid is going to be highly reduced because the process of synthesis would involve sequential reduction. Is that okay? So, If this is your fatty acid synthase, it has a temporary coding site there, it has an SL carrier protein there, which also has a cysteine. This is the enzyme fatty acid synthase. We said the repeating reaction would include one, a condensation reaction, two, it will be followed by a reduction reaction. Three, there will be a dehydration reaction. And four, there will be another reduction reaction. The growth of a fatty acid is going to be by acetyl groups, to mean two carbons. Is that clear? And in the process, the first reaction would involve addition of two carbons, the next reaction, addition of two other carbons, it would be growing by two carbons. And you'll notice that this is going to be occurring around what we refer to as the beta carbon. And maybe just to remind you about what I mean when they call the beta carbon, it relates to the structure of the fatty acid itself. So you see, if you look at the fatty acid, it looks something like this, CH3, CH2, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, CH2, it can look something like that, or H, right? That's the fatty acid. It has a carboxyl group there and it has a long chain of hydrocarbons attached behind here. This is what we want to synthesize. Right? In fact, when you synthesize the fatty acid from de novo, which means from the scratch, the largest number of carbons that fatty acid can have is 16 palmitic acid. Alright? What you notice is that you can number these carbons on the fatty acids in two ways. One way is by just giving the number. This is carbon one, two, three, da 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 da. I think this is eleven. See what I mean? The carbon one is the carbon which has the carboxyl group. And then this is the last carbon. The other way is you can actually number them from the methyl carbon going the other way. The methyl carbon 
is referred to as the omega capital. Right? This means that whether fatty acid has 11 carbons, the last carbon which has a methyl group is the omega carbon. If it has 18, the last one is the omega carbon. Is that clear? So you can number from the omega carbon. And when you hear what you say omega 3 and omega 6, it means the first double bond is three carbons away from the methyl carbon. Is that clear? That's why we talk about omega 3 and omega 6, linolenic acid and linoleic acid. Linolenic acid being omega 3 because it has the double bond at three carbons away from the last carbon. And then it follows from there, there is three other carbons, there is another double bond, three carbons later, and another one, three carbons later, up to carbon number nine. From the last carbon. Is that clear? Follow up to this. This carbon is omitted. Then the next carbon here is referred to as the alpha carbon. So this is the carboxyl carbon, then the alpha carbon, beta carbon, gamma, and it continues like that. Whatever is in between, the last one is the omega carbon. So when we come to the process of beta oxidation, we are going to be talking about oxidation around the beta carbon, or the carbon number three. When it comes to fatty acid synthesis, it will be synthesis which is going to involve reduction around carbon number three, or the beta carbon. Exactly. It will be around here, between the alpha and the beta, that is where the reduction is going to be occurring. Between alpha and beta, that is where the oxidation is going to be occurring in the process of breakdown of the fatty acid. Is that okay? Building up on this, we can now show the process of fatty acid synthesis. Yes, sir. It stores, it's a way of storing. Yeah, it's a realistic way of storing energy. Because fats are highly anhydrous, you can store huge amounts in the adipose tissue, the white adipose tissue. But carbohydrates, you can't store them largely. You probably store only about 400 grams in the liver and about, is it 350? There's more in the muscles. So about 400 grams in the muscles, about 350 in the liver, something like that. Because they are actually uh, highly polar, they will interact largely with water, you can't store much. But you can store huge amounts of fat in the adipose tissue. So it's a way of storing. That's why you actually synthesize fats. Is that okay, Nassim? Yeah. The glucose are really involved in the process of fatty acid synthesis? Largely involved. It's unfortunate that you, we need to buy a watch, but before you came in, we explained that glucose is the main activator of insulin secretion, which leads to fatty acid synthesis. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So you can still go and check this online, post this online, so that you can actually see this. All right. Now, let's talk about fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis is actually going to be catalyzed by the enzyme fatty acid synthase, and what this is going to involve, it will involve growing of a fatty acid chain around the acyl carrier protein. All right? We want to make this. And what we are starting with is a mononaw A. A. Mononaw. Is that okay? So, the first reaction is going to involve the addition of the first acetal of A. It's probably the, first, the only acetal of A that is going to be added fatty acid, fatty acid of A. So an acetal of A is going to be added there to the acyl carrier protein. So this comes in. The CoA goes off. And 
assist the attachment of the acetal group there. So your end product will look like this, ACP. CH3 and there where there is a steam which has the theo group will be there. This is what is going to happen. This reaction is catalyzed by one of the catalytic activities of fatty of the enzyme fatty acid synthase. In fact, this one is called Acetal CoA SCP trans acylase. Acetal CoA SCP trans acylase. Other books call it Acetal CoA SCP acetal trans acylase. This is an enzyme, this is a catalytic activity of the enzyme fatty acid synthase. It attaches the acetal group onto the acyl protein to produce that. The next reaction, the malonyl CoA will be added. So there is a So not really. The next reaction you have to notice is that this acetal group would move to the temporary coding site. It's what you're going to be seeing often. To move from the acyl protein to the temporary coding site so that this part is free steam CH3 this alkyl protein SH3 so that becomes free the next reaction allow me to remove this the next reaction is that a malonyl group is going to be added there and this malonyl CoA will come in so the malonyl CoA comes in like that okay CH2H remember this carbon dioxide that is there is the one that was added by Acetal CoA carboxylase, right? So the CoA would come off, and this malonate group attaches there. 